Okay, let's go to page uh, 28 and do number 22. Okay, it says which which of the following uh, which of the following equals to cotangent of 10 plus tangent of 5. So which one, and they give you a list. Okay, so what we need to do is, let's go and simplify these and see what we end up with. Okay. So cotangent equal to cosine over sine, so this is equal to cosine 10 over sine 10. And tangent is sine over cosine, so this is equal to sine 5. Now, there's no degrees, means this is radian. Okay, cosine of 5. Okay, then next, let's go and make into common denominator. So it'll be sine 10, cosine 5. Okay, so this will give you cosine 10, cosine 5, plus sine 10, sine 5. Okay. And if you notice that this is the, uh, this is the difference identity for cosine, so this is equal to cosine of 10 minus 5. Okay. So this identity is this one here. And so this will equal to cosine of 5 over sine 10 cosine 5. And cosine 5 cancels out. So this is equal to 1 over sine 10. So 1 over sine is cosecant. So this becomes cosecant of 10. And so that would be the, uh, the second one, okay? Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, if sine x equal to cosine of 2x, and x is between 0 and pi over 2. Okay, you're looking for the x. Okay, so since this is sine, so the double angle formula for cosine, there are three choices. So since this is sine, we're going to use some with a sine. So sine x equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And what we're going to do is going to move it into this side so we can make it equal to zero so we can do factoring. So you got two sine squared x plus sine x minus one equal to zero. And if we use the master product, so we get two comma negative one. So this will be the inside, so it'll be plus one. This will be the outside, so it'll be minus one. Okay. So from here, we get sine x equal to negative one. From here, we get sine x equal to one over two. Okay. And so over here, you, when you draw your picture, it's going to be over here. So this would be three pi over two, but this one is outside of the of the range, so this one is no good. Now. Now this is pi over uh, one half, sine x equal to one half, so it'd be one over two, so it'd be square root of three. So this would be pi over six, okay? Therefore the answer would be pi over six, and that's it. Okay. So you have to pay attention to the, to the boundary, okay? Okay, let's go to next one. Okay, next one has three parts. So 24, let's do the I. Okay, you want to prove that sine 10 degrees, sine, uh, uh, sine of 20 degrees, sine of 30 degrees, equal to sine 10 degree, sine 10 degrees, sine of 100 degrees. Okay. Now, when you're doing the proof, you can you can try to 
go from here to here or you can go from here to here so for this one it's probably easy if you go from here to here okay so let's start with this side so sine 10 sine 10 sine of 100 degrees okay now if you if you notice sine of 100 degrees over here it's going to be equal to sine of 80 okay okay so this is this is 100 degrees and this is 80 so that so that would be equal okay so this is equal to sine of 80 degrees okay because again they have the same value so they will add up equal to 180 okay so they are supplementary angles and then from here um, then you want to use the the co uh, complementary angles okay so sine of 80 equal to cosine of 10 so this, so this will equal to sine 10 sine 10 and this becomes cosine of 10 okay and this one would be half of the double angle so this would be equal to one half sine of 20 degrees okay and then from here now one half this half over here is if you do one half this will give you 30 degrees okay so one half equal to sine of 30 degrees so this will equal to sine of 10 degrees and you got sine of 20 degrees and one half is sine of 30 degrees and so this is equal to that so it checks okay okay so 24i double i you got sine 20 degrees sine 20 degrees sine of 30 degrees equal to sine of 10 degrees sine of 20 degrees sine of 80 degrees so again let's go and start from this side and try to get to this side so let's start with sine of 10 degrees sine of 20 degrees and sine of 80 degrees so you have to use a lot of co uh, complementary angle and and the uh, uh, supplementary angle so we're going to move this out here so put this together with that so I get sine of 10 degrees and sine of 80 degrees okay so put put this together with this one so just rearrange the order okay. and and again from what we know from before right so if you notice that 80 degrees and this would be 10 degrees right so you have to use com uh, the complementary angles so this is equal to sine of 20 degrees and this would be sine of 10 degrees so sine 80 is equal to cosine uh, 10 okay and again this is going to be half of the double angle so they equal to one half uh, sine of 20 degrees And so this will equal to sine of 20 degrees. Now, so this would be a sine of 20 degrees. And one half, again, remember what, what we know from here, right? One half equal to sine of 30 degrees. Okay. And again, so this is equal to that, right? So check. Okay. Okay, let's go to the third one. You got sine of 20 degrees, sine of 30 degrees, sine of 30 degrees, equal to sine of 10 degrees, sine of 40 degrees, and sine of 50 degrees. Okay, so let's go and start from this side and try to get to this side. Okay, so you got sine of 10 degrees, sine of 40 degrees sine of 50 degrees okay. and then again you want to use a complementary angle so 
So sine of 50 equal to cosine of 40. Okay, so that's why this is a, see the COS is cosine, it's a, comp, it's a complement, uh, complementary angle of sine, right? So that's where it came from. Okay. So this one is going to be half angle, I want to have the double angle formula, right? So it'd be one half sine of 80 degrees, okay? So again, sine, sine 80 equal to two sine 40 cosine 40, right? Okay. And then again, from here, you can go ahead and, um, so this would be sine 10 degrees and this one half is equal to sine of 30 degrees okay and then this one sine 80 equal to cosine of 10 degrees okay again you have to look at what you have over here notice there's no 10 degrees so you have to get rid of the 10 degree and there's a reason doing that okay so you have to look look on the other side see what you have what you need to get and what what you need to get rid of so again there's no 10 degrees so you have to get rid of the 10 and the way to do that is by using that okay okay so rearrange the order again and then from here so put these two together so using a lot of double angle formula and complementary angle and the uh, and supplementary angle Okay, so this is half of the double angle formula, so it'll be one half sine of 20 degrees. Okay, and so again, so this becomes, um, I'm going to write this first, so it'll be sine of 20 degrees. So this came from here, and then I have sine of 30 degrees from here, and one half equal to sine of 30 degrees. Okay, so this came from here, and this match that, and that's it. Let's go to number 25. Okay, it's a computer number of degrees in the smallest positive angle x such that 8 sine x cosine x to the 5 minus 8 sine x to the 5 power cos, uh, cosine x equal to 1. Okay. Okay, so first let's go and go and do factoring. Okay, we can factor out the eight, we can factor out the sine x, we can factor out the cosine x. So go and do the factoring, and so you're gonna get cosine x to the fourth power minus sine x to the fourth power equal to one. And then from here you can factor this again. So let's go and do that. So you get cosine square x plus sine square x, and you got cosine square x minus sine square x equal to one. Okay, so now we can use a little bit of identity. Okay, so we can use double angle identity for sine. So this would be two, uh, four sine of two x, and this is equal to one. And this is the again double angle formula for cosine. Okay. And that's gonna put all this together. So we got four sine two x cosine two x equal to one. And again, this is a double angle formula again. So it'd be two sine of four x equal to one. Then from here now it's a little bit easier now. We can divide by two. So sine of 4x equal to 1 over 2. Okay, so now you can go and solve. So sine, so you can think of this as a theta. So sine theta equal to 1 over 2. So that means the theta, whatever that is, the theta will equal to uh, the 30 degrees. Okay. 
and then you divide by 4 so x will equal to 7.5 degrees okay. Okay, let's go to the next one Okay, so if sine x plus cosine x equal to negative 1 over 5 and the, and the boundary were 3 pi over 4 is less than x is less than pi and looking for value of cosine of 2x okay. Okay, so since you're looking for cosine of 2x, you have to get the boundary for 2x. So let's go and multiply this by 2 and put it up here. So multiply by 2, okay, and this would be 3 pi over 2, okay. So that means you're looking at the quadrant 4, okay, so this is, so this is quadrant 4, okay, so let's keep that in mind. Okay, um, to solve this one, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of difficult to convert when there's no square. So what we're going to do, we're going to square both sides. So sine x plus cosine x equal to negative 1 over 5. So we're going to square both sides. Okay. And then you're going to get sine square x plus 2 sine x cosine x plus cosine square x equal to 1 over 25. Okay. And now this one and this one is equal to 1, right? And this is double angle formula, so 1 plus sine of 2x equal to 1 over 25. So what we're doing is try to make into a single function, so that way you can solve. Okay, so minus 1 on both sides. So sine of 2x equal to negative 24 over 25. So you can think of this as your theta, okay? So so here's your angle 2x, that's your theta, and it's negative 24 over 25. And so this is your uh, special triangle, so this would be a 7. Okay. So once you do that, now you can figure out the cosine 2x. So cosine of 2x, again, based on, this is angle 2x, right? So this would be perfect for that. So cosine is the horizontal over hypotenuse, so you go to 7 over 25. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, number 27. If, if the x is between 0 and 180 degrees, and you have cosine x plus sine x equal to 1 over 2, you want to look for the PQ such that, so you're looking for the P and the Q such that tangent X equal to negative P plus square of Q over 3. So basically you're solving for tangent of X, okay? Okay, so we're going to do like what we did on the previous problem, okay? Because again, with a, with a single power, you cannot really do much to it. So what you need to do is go and square both sides, okay? Okay, so cosine x plus sine x equal to 1 over 2, and you want to square both sides. So that way you get cosine square x plus 2 sine x cosine x plus sine square x equal to 1 over 4. Okay, and again, the purpose of doing that is you can simplify things a little bit. So this becomes um, 1 plus Again, this is a double angle formula so be sine 2x equal to 1 over 4. And then go ahead and minus 1 on both sides. So you got sine 2x equal to negative 3 over 4. Okay, so you can get these things working. So sine 2x is negative, so it's going to be over here and over here. Okay. And so this would be 2x, 2x. So it'd be negative 3 over 4. So it'd be negative 3 over 4. Therefore, this would be square root of 7 or negative square root of 7. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so okay, now what we need to do is um. So now we've got 2x, but we need to get x. So what we need to do is we're going to start with this again. So we try to figure what is, so we try to find the expression uh, for the x, okay? Okay, so put this aside. So what we need to do is again, we're going to start with cosine x. We want to find a different expression for the, the, the cosine uh, for the x. Right now we have 2x, but we need to find x. So what we're going to do is So cosine x minus sine x squared, this is equal to uh, cosine squared x minus 2 sine x cosine x plus sine squared x. And this is equal to 1 minus sine of 2x. Okay, we can we know that from before, right? Okay. So, so that means cosine x minus sine x squared equal to 1 minus sine of 2x from here, right? We got value from here. So it'd be minus um, negative 3 over 4. So we substitute this into here. So basically we try to find out the, the individual uh, angle. Okay, so you got cosine x minus sine x squared equal to 7 over 4. Now we're going to take the square root. So cosine x minus sine x is equal to square root of that. And um, now because, because the boundary is over here, so you can notice the, x, the boundary for x is quadrant 1 or 2, right? So when you take the, the plus or minus, um, you're going to end up with... Uh, in, in, in quadrant two, so you're going to end up with negative square root of seven over two. Okay. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move, we're going to move this equation down here. Okay. So notice you got minus right, and so we're going to put a plus in here. Okay. So put this on down here so we can solve. Okay. So using the elimination method. Again, so we started with the plus. So what we did, we're looking for what's the minus equal to. That way we can do the elimination method. So this is equal to one half. Okay. And then when we add this together, this will cancel out. So you get two cosine x. When you add this together, you're going to get one minus square root of seven over two. And then you divide by two. So you got cosine x equal to 1 minus square root of 7 over 4. Okay. okay, so again, to find tangent, you need to get sine and cosine, right? This is equal to sine x over cosine x. Okay. Okay, so now we have a cosine. Okay, now we need to get sine. Okay. Now, that, that's a different way you can do this. One way is that, that um, okay, cosine, cosine is horizontal over hypotenuse. So you can make it into 1 minus square root 7 over 4. And this would be x. So you can do that. Okay? And then you can use Pythagorean theorem to find this number over here. Okay? So that's, so th um, th so that's one way of doing it. Okay? Um, okay, so that's going to do that. Okay. So Pythagorean theorem. So you're going to get one minus square root of seven square plus the b b square equal to sixteen, right? A square plus b square equal to sixteen. Okay. A square plus b square equal to c square. Okay. So you're going to get one minus 
2 square root of 7 plus 7 plus b squared equal to 16. And if you move things around, so, um, so b, b squared equal to 8 minus 2 square root of 7. Now, so when you take the square root, you're going to run into a problem. So you're going to get kind of messy. So in this case, you probably don't want to do that, okay? Unless you really know your square roots, okay? So, so now to, so another method we can do is since we have these, right? So what we're going to do is we can do similar things. So what we do to solve for sine of x, all we have to do is just go and uh, subtract. So we're going to have a cosine x plus sine x equal to 1 over 2. And we have cosine x minus sine x equal to negative 7, square 7 over 2. Then we're going to subtract that, okay? So when we subtract cosine minus cosine, cancel out, sine minus negative sine give you 2 sine x. And you're going to get this minus, so you're going to get 1 plus square root of 7 over 2, right? This minus, I give you that. Again, when you divide, you get sine x equal to 1 plus square root of 7 over 4, okay? So now you have sine and cosine. Now you can go ahead and get tangent, right? So tangent of x equal to this over that. So it'd be 1 plus square root of 7 over 4 over 1 minus square root of 7 over 4. Okay, so multiply top and bottom by 4. So tangent x will equal to 1 plus square root of 7 over 1 minus square root of 7. Okay. Okay, now you have to simplify to match that you want to get into this format, right? So this is kind of density. So you multiply by the conjugate. Okay, so tangent of x will equal to 1 minus 7, and on the top you're going to get 1 plus 2 squared of 7 plus 7. Okay, it, it's just a square, right? Okay, so tangent of x will equal to 8 plus 2 square root of 7 over negative 6. So again, we want, we, we want to match that. So we're getting close. Okay, so we have to get into bottom equal to 3, positive 3. So we're going to... Um, okay, first let's go and take the negative to the front. So put a negative to the front, so to take a negative. And then, then after that we can reduce everything by 2. Okay, so that, that's kind of nice. So reduce everything by 2, you get 3, and you get 4 plus uh, square root of 7. Okay, so you can move the negative to the front, that take as that, and after you can reduce by 2, so you get that. So now it match, right, because this will equal to negative p plus square root of q over 3. So by match, you can see that p equal to 4, and q equal to 7. Okay, and therefore the answer you're looking for is 4 comma 7. Okay, so this problem is pretty lengthy. Okay, okay let's um, go to the next one. Okay, it says a quadrilateral A, B, C, D is inscribing a circle. Okay, so let's go and get a circle. So the picture in the book is a little bit off, okay? So I'm going to draw it so it's a little bit more accurate, okay? Okay, so with AD equal to 4, so that means it's equal to 2 and it's equal to 2, okay? And AB and BC, AB and BC have length of 1, okay? And you're looking for CD. Okay, you're looking for this length over here. Okay. So first, uh, let's go and draw this over here. Okay. And since this is the segment is one and the segment is one, that means the arc. That means the the arc 
AB is equal to arc BC, right? Because you, when you have the same segment, okay, so because AB equal to BC, so therefore arc equal to that. That means angle, meaning this angle are congruent, okay? okay? So that means angle CDB will equal to angle, will be congruent to angle BDA. Okay, so those are kind of the basic stuff we need to do first. Okay, okay. And now, um, since this is a diameter, so this would be the angle. This would be the right angle. Okay, okay. Again, because when when the hypotenuse of a triangle, when you when you when a triangle is inscribed in a semicircle, this would be a right triangle. Okay, and therefore by using this, you can see that the, um, the sine of, so here's your x, right? So sine of x, so here's your x, so sine would be this over that would equal to 1 over 4, okay? And so we, to look for this, uh, first let's, so when you draw this triangle, so once you have that triangle, then you can draw this triangle over here. Okay. So for so cosine, so this is a cosine of that triangle. So cosine of angle C D A equal to cosine of two x, right? C D A is two x. Okay, so cosine of two x will equal to one minus two sine square x. Right, that's your double angle formula. So cosine of 2x equal to 1 minus 2 times uh, so we know the sine x over here so it would be 1 fourth square. So cosine of 2x equal to 1 minus uh, 1 over 8. So cosine of 2x equal to 7 over 8. Okay, now once we do that, now we can come back over here. Now, um, the cosine of CDA, cosine of angle CDA, cosine is going to be equal to this over that. So equal to, equal to uh, 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 CD. So cosine of this triangle equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse, over AD. Okay, and so, so this one we know from here, cosine of CDA is 7 over 8, and CD is what we're looking for, and AD we know it's giving, it's 4, okay, so CD is equal to uh, 7 over 8 times 4, so CD equal to 7 over 2, okay, and that's it.